Okay, since this is the first episode in the Random Tips series, we're just going to solve a puzzle today. We'll keep cycling through the candidate filters, looking for patterns that I've covered so far in the complete course, up to video number 17. And I'll point out which technique I'm using with each move until the puzzle is solved. Here is a puzzle that is listed as hard, and it has 27 givens, so it shouldn't be too difficult. What we're going to do is quickly find the easy stuff like singles, locked candidates, pairs, triples, and then when we get stuck, we'll use whatever else we happen to see. Okay, let's take a look. So let's turn on the candidates, and we see that in row two, we have a naked single on one. So let's highlight the ones, and there it is right there. That's a one, that's a naked single. But let's see, let's see why that's a naked single. That's a naked single because it can see a two, a three, a four, a five, and a six, a seven, an eight, and a nine. So it can see all eight digits except for the one, so that can only be a one, and that's why it shows up there as a single candidate in that cell, and you can solve it like that. So that's just like a full house, except the eight digits are split up into three houses instead of just one house. All right, so let's remove those colors and keep going. So in block five, We've got locked candidates here, a one and a one. So one of those has to be true. So this one over here in column nine must be false. So let's move to the twos. And we've got a hidden single in block two and then another hidden single in block eight. And here you can see there is a dead swordfish is what I call this. This is a swordfish that all the eliminations are already made, but that's what a swordfish looks like. There are three rows and three columns containing at least two candidates. So you can look at this as the base sets being in the columns or the rows, but it doesn't matter. There are no eliminations to be made either way. So that's what I call a dead swordfish. All right, let's move to the threes. There's a hidden single in block two. That's the only three in block two. And then this is the only three in block three. And so let's move to the fours. I don't see anything there. Let's go to the fives. We have a single over here in block six. That's a hidden single. And then let's go to the sixes. All right, we've got a locked pair in column six and block two. So six, nine, six, nine. So we know that cannot be a six. So that's a seven. And these cannot be sixes down here in column six. So now we've got a single in column four. There's the only six in column four. That's a hidden single. And now we've got a hidden single here and here all on six. So we've solved those sixes and we have another dead swordfish remaining. So let's go to the sevens. I don't see anything there. The eights, okay, we've got a locked pair here in block three, seven, eight, seven, eight. We know that those own this row and they own the block. So that cannot be a seven, that cannot be a seven, that cannot be a seven, and that cannot be a seven, okay? So now let's look at the nines and I don't see anything there. So now we go right back to the ones and start all over again. So here, uh, nothing there. In block six, we have a hidden single on candidate two in block six. And then we're left with a dead X-wing this time. As you can see, those four colored cells form an X-wing. And when I say dead, what I mean is there's nothing you can do with it. So you just need to move on. You just have to recognize it as such. And there's nothing you can do with it immediately. So if it's a dead swordfish or a dead X-wing, you just go to the next candidate. All right, so let's take a look at the threes. And there's a dead swordfish. Let's go to the fours. And here I see an empty rectangle. So in block four, we've got a right angle, okay? And then here's your candidate A, and here's your candidate B. So we can eliminate this candidate four down here because it's in the same column as the empty rectangle. Candidate A is in the same row as the empty rectangle, and this is a conjugate pair. And regardless of which four in that conjugate pair happens to be true, the four in row nine, column one, is going to be false. All right, so let's get those colors out of there. And now we've got a two-string kite on the same candidate four. So we've got a strong link here, and we've got a strong link here and we have a weak link in between. So now we know that the candidate that can see both of those endpoints will be false, and that would be in row four, column nine, and in order to eliminate it, I'm gonna to have to get rid of these arrows. So this four is false, and it is gone. 
But now that's created a set of locked candidates here in column nine, which are going to claim these three candidate fours, okay? And now I can see we have a naked triple here in column nine of four, seven, and eight. So that means this cannot be a four or an eight, which means we can solve that cell for six, and then this becomes a naked single on one up here, and that becomes a naked single on nine, a naked single on six, and another naked single on nine. So let's get rid of those colors. And now here in block seven, we have another set of locked candidates on the fours that are in row seven and block seven. So that's gonna claim that four. So that creates a naked pair on the one and the seven. So that can't be a one and that cannot be a seven. And let's get rid of the colors. And then I see we have a naked four up here, a naked six, and it's starting to fall apart, but we're not done yet. Okay, here in block six, we've got a naked pair of seven and eight. So that's gonna remove that seven, that eight, that eight, and that eight. And then we've got a naked pair, which is a locked pair of four and nine. So that's gonna get rid of that nine and that nine, which is going to leave a naked single in that square in row five, column eight. So let's get rid of those colors. And now we've got another naked pair of seven and eight here, which would get rid of that eight and we'll leave a naked single on nine right there. So let's get rid of the colors and let's look at candidate eight and let's take a look in row five and it looks like we've got some locked candidates. They're gonna claim these three candidate eights. Okay, get rid of the colors. And now let's take a look at candidate seven and I think we have a skyscraper here with these are our two endpoints and here is the foundation. Let's draw it. We've got a strong link from this seven to that seven. And we have a strong link from this seven to that seven. And we have a weak link in between. There's our foundation. And there are the two spires pointing to the right. So any candidate seven that can see those two endpoints in the yellow cells must be false. And that's the seven in row four, column nine. So let's get rid of those arrows. So we can get rid of this candidate seven up in row four, column nine, which leaves a naked single on the eight. And now we've got a naked pair of four and seven down here. So that means we can remove this seven. And that becomes a naked single. And it looks like the puzzle is unlocked and it's gonna be naked singles from here on out. Sorry about that. So there you have it. The puzzle is solved with not too much effort. We used locked candidates type one and two, naked pairs and locked pairs, one naked triple, a two string kite, an empty rectangle, a skyscraper, and a bunch of hidden and naked singles. So that was a wide array of some of the solving techniques that we have covered so far. This was the first of the Random Tips and Tricks episodes, which will be an ongoing series. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Until then, be well and be happy.